Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's having a good day today. So, if you saw the last video, well, let me put it this way. If you didn't see the last video, you need to go check that out now. But if you did see the last video, um, we're having some transmission issues with the white truck here. Um, the truck is going to go to Muldoon's to get checked over. John wants to take the transmission apart and out and look at it. Something's wrong. Um, we don't know what. I guess he's leaning towards the torque converter since the last time I talked to him. So we got to get that all sorted. So before we get that all sorted, really we need to get the interior of the truck sorted, which as you can see is a mess. There's just shavings of shit everywhere. But like I said, I just want to get the truck kind of ready for him. So when we drop it off, it's not just he's getting in a dirty truck, a shitty truck, you know, that kind of stuff. Just trying to be courteous, I guess. Um, but a part of that is, I, after he gets everything back together, I know he want, he's going to want to go on a test drive. So, the truck, when it downshifts from second to first, like when you're coming to a stop sign, um, kind of skids a little bit. It's definitely uh, downshifting too soon, um, which is a setting in the anteater. So I figured, you know what, I need to change that. It's something I've been meaning to do, and I just haven't. Um, so I figured this was a good opportunity for me to show you guys how to adjust the transmission set points and shift points with the anteater software from Firepunk. So if you don't know what the anteater is, it consists of basically this little box here, which is covered in shit, this little control box here, this little handheld or dash, you know, you can put it on Velcro controller here, um, and then uh, a micro USB cable is something that you'll use to interface with your laptop or whatnot. So that's basically it. The inputs for that are a TPS sensor, which would be our throttle position sensor. Um, we just tapped into a wire on ours. So if you had like say a 12 valve truck and you wanted to use this, you could, but you'd need to add some sort of a TPS. Um, the other inputs are there's a sensor in the rear of the transmission for uh, shaft speed. So that's like, you know, going to equate to another number. But yeah, so there's that speed sensor in the back of the transmission. And there's one more in there. Oh, and then there it actually plugs into the transmission, the 8-pin transmission harness itself. So that's the other connector. And then uh, for setting the anteater, usually you set the, the throttle valve, which would have been like if you had a 12 valve or on the newer stuff, it's all uh, electronic. Like it has a TTVA motor on an 06, 07 truck. But before that, they actually had a linkage. And that's basically your throttle position as far as the kick down of the transmission is concerned. Ours is static, set at about 75% with a piece of all thread that's tied off to a bracket in the rear of the trans. So, to do this, you're obviously going to need a laptop. I believe you need to run Windows to do it. I don't think there's Mac support, but I know you can run Windows on Mac, so that's the whole thing. So, let's dive into it. I'll show you exactly how to tune your transmission with the Anteater software. And I almost completely forgot to address a lot of the comments from the last video. Yes, the beard is gone. Um, I had a fit test. So I want to assume that most of you know what that is. But for those who don't, I had to get fitted and tested for a, uh, a mask, you know, for breathing in bad chemicals, that kind of shit. Really, for me at work, it's for breathing in hexavalent chrome from welding stainless steel. So I had to get a fit test. They put a mask on you. They do tests. You gotta bend up and down, side to side, all kinds of stuff. But you gotta be clean shaven. So that's why there's no more beard. Will it be coming back? Um, next hunting season, definitely. Usually I will grow the beard during hunting season because I'm out in the woods. And it gets chilly sometimes. Having a beard, I don't need a face mask. I don't need none of that shit. Between now and then, it'll probably be off and on. Just when I feel like shaving, I'll shave. You know, if I don't feel like shaving, I won't. So that's where the beard went. It wasn't a big thing. It just, I had a fit test. That's all. All right, guys, enjoy the video. We got our laptop here. 
So we're gonna plug the anteater in. I have the truck to the on position, so the anteater is powered up. So now we are plugged in. We're gonna go down this top hat down here. Start that up. This is what is called, oh, and by the way, you get this at firepunk.com slash anteater. Um, this is the FSTC dash, which I believe stands for Firepunk Standalone Transmission Controller. So we're hooked up to the truck, the truck's on, we'll go down here to find, and we found our truck. Now all of this stuff up here is, honestly I don't know, other than mile an hour, you know, your PSI, a lot of this stuff is all for the guy who made it, I guess, but it, we're, it's nothing we need to concern ourselves with, um, other than you do have your TPS here, which if I push the throttle pedal down, you can see it change, so that's our throttle input. So, on to designing our tune. You go down here to design calibration, and here it is. It's very basic. They give you three to start off with. As you can see, they're straight line tunes. You could run this. It's not recommended. It's not exact, you know, but you could run it. So, the graph is throttle position, 0 to 100, and then mile an hour. So you're going to set this graph accordingly. I've been told that setting your graph so, you know, you have it, say, between 10 to 30, and then the next one be 30 to 50, your your shifts is makes it a little bit nicer than going, say, just up on a, a straight angle, going up 10, whether that makes sense to you or not. But just play with it, and you'll figure out what you want. Everything, like I said, is throttle position a mile an hour. So down here are our variables. So you have unlock for the torque converter, lock for the torque converter, overdrive off, overdrive on, one, two, shift, two, three, shift. Very simple and mean it makes sense um, as to what, what those things are. So after that, we get on to the important shit. The important shit is right here, tire size and differential ratio. Those are important because if those aren't correct, if you forget to change these and say you have four tens and you got, I don't know, 37 inch tall tires, what's up here in the graph and you know your mile an hour speed, that doesn't matter because it doesn't correspond at all to this part. So that's very important. Usually the first thing I do is go down there and adjust that. So I'll show you my daily driver tune, which we need to adjust. And you can see here, um, my when I save the file, I usually try and give a little description and then you know put a date or something so I can keep track of things. So as you can see, mine is fairly flat. One little curve up here, but this is fairly fat, flat. I haven't adjusted it as much as I should. Um, I really need to work on the top end here, especially overdrive, because when we're going... I don't know, between 60 and 70, and I want a little more, it definitely gets a little sm smoky rather than downshifting in the third and taking off. So I need to work on that. But what we need to work on today is right down here is our 1-2 shift. So our 1-2 shift at zero throttle input is 12. I'm going to make that 5, I think, and hopefully that will take care of the issue. Um, like I said, it was kind of skidding the tires and all that. And really, if you're at 0% throttle in second, you're going to probably be coming up to a stop sign. So that makes sense. So what we'll do is we'll actually adjust that on all the tunes. And I don't know what these other ones I had set for. I don't use them, but we'll still change it just because. So we'll save as. And we'll call this daily 1 27 18 okay so we have our tune saved our tune adjustment we can back out of here and we are already connected to the truck so we will go to upload calibration we will choose our tune and as you can see down here successfully wrote calibration to controller so now it's in the truck so before we actually go ahead and take the truck out for a drive, I want to show you how to build a race tune. Now, you're probably asking yourself, Tom, what do you mean build a race tune? You just showed us how to do it. Well, here's the here's the problem. Well, I'll open mine. 
Hoosiers will open this one. So this is the tune. So the tunes I had for the transmission when we were at the track. As you can see, the front portion here is the same as my daily driver tune, or at least close. And that's our zero to forty percent throttle. The reason for that is really when you're on the track, you're not going to go below fifty percent throttle. Um, so this is more for going back to the staging lanes and all that. I didn't want it, you know, just running in first gear, running it out the whole time, that sort of thing. So then at 40% throttle over that, most of the time we'll be up here in 80 to 90 to, well, majority of the time will be 100% throttle, but, so it's just flat. So I know this seems simple and I like, you said, you know, Tom, what's so hard about making a race tune? There's nothing hard. It's just that this graph is based off a of mile an hour. So if I say I want to shift at 4,500 RPM, there's the dilemma. What is 4,500 RPM for a 1-2 shift or 2-3 shift overdrive? That's the problem. Of course, torque converter lockup, we're going to bring that sucker right in after the 1-2 shift. So we're hitting hard right in the second gear. So to figure this out, I actually have a website here, um, which shit. How do you figure this out? I actually have a website that I use. We'll go down here. This is blocklayer.com slash rpm dash gear dot ASPX. So we're going to go down here, and as you can see, it is in KPH. So we're going to go up here, hit the Imperial button, and that should change us to mile an hour. All right, so now we're at mile an hour. So we're going to go over here, gear one. 2.45 because we're talking about a 48 RE. 1.45. Gear three is one to one, and then we're going to limit out at we're going to limit out at fourth gear, and that is 0.69. 69 dudes. So that's our overdrive. We're going to want our diff ratio, which for us is 373s. We're going to hit calculate. Um, let me go to 3000 here, just for the heck of it. What's nice about this software is it, it'll list. We'll hit auto shift here, and we can actually watch. This is what our truck would be doing. Say we wanted to shift at 3000 RPM. So at second, at 1776 RPM, we'd be into second. In third, you know, it would shift to third. Let me back up. So we have when it'll shift. So at first gear, it'll shift at 26 mile an hour. Second gear, 44 mile an hour. Third, oh, you know what? I missed something. Oh, shit. Okay, so our mile an hour are off, and I couldn't figure out why. And I think that's because we are not at the same as we were for tire diameter. I completely skipped that. So 29 and a half. We'll hit calculate. We'll go to auto shift here. So I fucked that up, but it's no big deal. But what I was saying on the RPM side, when the truck shifts at 3,000 RPM with the next ratio, it'll show you here on the RPM dial on the tack where you will start into the next year. So if you shift at 3,000 in first, you're going to end up at 1776 in second. America. So on the mile an hour of the speedometer here you can see at first gear we want to shift it 29 mile an hour that'll equal 3000 rpm second 49 third 71 so if we go back to our anteater um i don't know why i set that to 3000 i'm going to want to go to 4000 that'll equate to this tune all right i don't know why why i did that so we'll do 4000 auto shift so now at 4000 speed this up a little
All right, so 38 and first, second, 65, and third, 94. So if we go back to our anteater, and I change this tune to be 4,000 RPM shifts here, so we're looking at 38, 64, and 93. 38, 64, and 93. So, as you can see, we're within one mile an hour on each of these. Why there's a discrepancy, I'm not sure. I don't remember why. But another part of this is down here. You, we can do the same thing. Go to 4,000. Draw the graph. We get kind of the similar thing. This is a little easier to, to read. Shows you exactly what you want to see. So that's how I set up a race tune as I go to this blocklayer.com. And I use that to equate my mile an hour to the RPM I want to shift at. So that's kind of a little tutorial of the anteater software and how to use it. Very simple, very basic. Really, it just takes time to play with your settings for what you like. And let's see if we can drive this truck a little and the transmission will cooperate for a minute. disconnected because it actually shuts off just how I have it wired in so we'll go over here we'll hit the um, stop button go back to find okay we have activity we have this little activity light here that's how we know something's going on so as we pull out of the garage we can see we're getting one mile an hour a whole one mile an hour so driving it already shifted to second. So we come to a stop. Don't even feel the uh, two to one shift. So we'll start off again. Second gear. So I think that's good. Um, it shifted in the second maybe a little too soon. I'm not going to fuck with it too much because I don't know how long this truck's going to last as it is. Um, well, the transmission, I should say, without clogging up. Look at that. It even reads mile an hour in reverse. Using the laptop, it's pretty simple to make a tune or write a tune for the anteater software. It's not like uh, if you've ever looked at the PCS stuff, you know, it's got line pressure, it's got this, it's, it's just shift points. Um, mile an hour as it relates to throttle position, and it, it's very simple. So if you're thinking about one of these, um, really they're kind of were built for 48 RE swap trucks. But that being said, if you don't like how I know, you know, you can change a computer a little bit with like an 06, 07, some of those trucks. But if you have a 12 valve, you don't like where lockup and torque converter, uh, torque converter lockup, where lockup, where overdrive comes in. Say you want to control that kind of stuff. You can get an anteater for that application to change the transmission shift points for those older trucks. So... If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, you know, set, put a comment down below. What do you think? You know about this. Um, also, if it's something that you are thinking about getting for your truck, I highly recommend going on to Competition Diesel. Um, the forums there. There is a uh, shit. What do you call it? There's a there's a topic there. It is 
called, uh, I think it's Software Beta Testers Needed for Anteater. You know, it was started like two or three years ago. A lot of good information there, and the guys who started with the anteaters, you know, giving their input and things that change and all that. But I would suggest you read that whole thread. Excuse me. Read that whole thread and check that out, and that'll give you a lot of good information. Um, this is not my first anteater. The first one I had stopped communicating to the truck. It would randomly like just not want to shift. And here we, I figured out it was the anteater itself. They actually had a gauge pod style. I don't know if I have any pictures. If I will, I'll flash one up on the screen. Gauge pod style used to be the old style they had. But uh, the guys at Firepunk are so great to work with. I called them up, and I think Rick's the guy in, char in sales. I said, hey, I'm having this problem with my anteater. This is what it's doing. He says, yes, we've had a lot of those or a few of those. That was like the first run of them. I had one of the original like 30 or 40. So he got my name and address. He sent me out a new one. He says, just put the old one in the box with the shipping label, ship it back. We want to do a failure analysis and see why these things are failing. So uh, that's the kind of company they are, the kind of customer service they have. So, all right, I've rambled on here for the entire video today, but I figured that was something you guys wanted to see. So, I hope you enjoyed. Please like the video, comment, and of course subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, tell your family, whatever. Anyway, guys, have a good one and uh, get out in your garage. Get the tune in your truck. Well, work on it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually do the engine tuning. It's, that's way too complicated for me. Alright, guys.